Hey fellow tennis nerds and welcome to another vlog. This time I wanted to talk about the rackets of the ATP finalists. It's a post I recently published on Tennis Nerd and I hope you read that and check out the links. There's plenty of links to uh, other pro player information uh, where I list all the specs. This video will not deal so much with the specs because there are in all my other videos and you can find them there. So check out the links in the description below and you will find more detailed information about specs. And the point of this video was that you should not get too obsessed with the pro player specs because us more you know, human players um, cannot really play with those specs effectively. It's very difficult to swing a racket with those kind of swing weights and pretty small sweet spots in some cases and uh, they're quite difficult to use. Instead we can get inspiration from the rackets they use and how it fits with their style. So, so if we go through the list a bit briefly, we talk about Novak. He uses a pro stock from head. It's 95 square inches, 1819 string pattern. It's not the speed MP. Most of you might know this already or have seen my other videos. I've tried his racket in the past, both in the 1820 and in the 1819 specs. Very difficult to use that racket, quite small sweet spot, really nice plush feel uh, when you're on your game. Uh, but it's definitely for kind of that all-court defensive baseline that Novak is. He needs to thread the needle, he needs to get pinpoint precision, he strings with a hybrid so he gets a little bit more power um, but, but a pretty high tension for more control. So he definitely wants to be able to kind of control the ball as much as possible. He always has this great depth on all of his shots. It's always very close to the baseline and uh, it's always impressive to watch him practice and see how kind of the precision he has on every every shot and the control he has. He can really do pretty much anything on a tennis court. So that kind of racket with a tight string pattern, small head size works really well for Novak. And it's there's no coincidence that that's also very similar spec to what Daniel Medvedev uses. I mean, Medvedev endorses the Technifiber 305, the new RS T-Fight version uh, that is reviewed on this channel. We'll also put a link below for that. I really like that racket, uh, but Daniel uses an older version, which is also 95 square inches, also 1819 string pattern. Um, a little bit thicker beam, but many similarities. And uh, he plays a very similar game to Novak. That's probably why Novak finds that matchup a bit challenging, is that they, they're both super consistent. They don't make mistakes. Um, Daniel has a, a bit of a bigger serve, so he can get some more free points on the serve compared to Novak and he's very, very uh, diligent from the baseline, just stays there with you and it's very tough to hit him off the court. Also can inject some pace into his shots from time to time. So they're quite similar in the game styles. And uh, Novak is probably a bit better, like a precision player and um, maybe a bit mentally stronger, but then Daniil has his serve. So, so that's an interesting matchup to, uh, to watch out for. So those two guys, pretty similar all court, but still defensive baseline. Very tough to get them to move beyond that baseline. They, they really hold it, hold the fort there and make sure that they make very, very little errors. They kind of use the opponent's weaknesses to the max and, um, and really try to be smart about everything they do. They play kind of like chess on a tennis court. So it's not a real coincidence that they both use similar specs, really heavy rackets around 360 grams and uh, with the um, 95 square inch head, 1819, very tight pattern, but the, they have one less cross string to open up a bit more spin compared to many control patterns, which is 1820. So the 1819 is a very interesting pattern, I think. I really like that pattern myself in this case. So uh, those two players play a pretty similar style. If we talk about Rafa, we all know he uses the Pure Aero or actually the Aero Pro Drive original from 2005, four, and uh, he stayed with that racket for all of his career. Uh, it's still very similar to the newer versions, uh, a little bit more controlled, I would say, uh, the first version of the, of the Aero Pro Drive or the Pure Aero that it later became. And he used it in this kind of Mallorca inspired paint job that's really nice. I really like it personally. I think some people might find it to be too colorful, but I, I, I really like it. From what I heard, I think Babla will release that paint job uh, to, uh, to the retail buyers as well uh, in the early 2021. So it will be interesting to see that. But it will be a different spec and a different racket than what Rafa actually uses. But as I said, don't be too obsessed uh, trying to imitate pro player specs. It will be quite difficult to do that. So 
Uh, Rafa uses a little top spin. Uh, he has pretty high swing weight. That's a little weight to with the 12 o'clock position. And he has a little bit higher spec than team, but they both play kind of aggressive, heavy top spin baseline game. Team is perhaps a bit more aggressive, but they, they have similar styles. Both use Bubble Up, which is kind of a spin power frame brand and uh, don't really focus so much on control these days. So they can really generate a lot of pace and a lot of velocity and a lot of RPMs on the ball. So that really works for both of them. Rafa uses the 100 square inch team, the Pure Strike 98 with the 1820 string pattern for a little bit more control. So a lot of pros use 1820 patterns while for most rec players, we might need a bit more lift uh, on the ball with the 1619, 1618 with more open patterns, uh, but a lot of pros still use 1820. Rafa, on the other hand, he's used the 1619 open pattern bubble up for all of his career and will keep doing so. Uh, he's just been adding weight over and over uh, or, you know, increasing the amount of weight on the racket over the years to get a bit more plow through stability and swing weight. And um, that's a pretty heavy spec. Uh, if you play with his actual racket, I've held his actual racket a few times and it's, it's quite hefty. It's not something that is easy to use uh, effectively on the court. Team is a little bit um, more of a, of, a, of a player spec that people could actually try, but it's still quite heavy. And you know how he swings, he swings like a maniac. So uh, two really aggressive, top spin oriented players and um, with a bit more thicker beam, a bit more power rackets. And um, then we have Zverev and Rublev. Uh, those two guys, they actually use the same racket mold uh, and the layup, as far as I know. So Rublev tried Zverev's racket a while back and he was under contract with Wilson and he still is, that's why it's blacked out. And he tried his head, um, which some people think is a Utex Speed MP and some people think is a Gravity Pro. They're very similar rackets, so that's why there's a a discussion whether the, the layup is, is different uh, or he is actually using the Retail Pro with some customization. Most pros customize the rackets with lead tape, silicone in the handle perhaps, and uh, they have a certain grip shape that they like, or um, like a grip size like Team uses 2.5 grip size, which is not available to, uh, to most uh, retail uh, buyers. So you need to go to a customizer or, or find a way to, to modify it yourself. Zverev Rublev, the Gravity Pro uh, is what they, uh, what likely Rublev will endorse. Maybe they put him on the tour version, I'm not sure, but they use the same mold of the frame and uh, both hit big from the baseline. Zverev is a little bit more defensive, I think. He could utilize his power a bit more, uh, in my opinion, from the baseline. He's, he's been playing better this year, definitely. For I think he's, he's found a bit more of a, of a steady, consistent approach. He's, he's, kind of eliminated those annoying double faults a bit. So that's that's good. Rublev has had a great year. He's won a lot of uh, events, 500, ATP 250. Uh, I think he has five titles, which is amazing. And uh, But he still hasn't had that success on the on the top level, Masters uh, and uh, Grand Slam. So we'll see if he can do that in the next year. Very aggressive game style. He swings for the fences. He used to use the Wilson 6195 uh, until just last year. Uh, where he tried the Sverre frame and really fell in love and gives him a bit bigger sweet spot, a little bit slower through the air, but with his swings, he can maybe take it. And the sweet spot will help him when he hits maybe a little bit off center with that massive swing speed he has. So for aggressive baseliners that need a little bit of control, I think the gravity line is a good, good option. Um, so like if you're a Rafa player, you want to use some kind of a spin oriented frame. If you need control, you want to use the kind of Medvedev and Djokovic style, and if you are a kind of a, an aggressive baseliner, the Gravity, the Phantom 100P, there are a few frames, and I will go through them, that could work for that type of player. And, and then we have Schwartzman, uh, kind of had a, a rough ATP Finals, it's a really tough field, you have to play the best eight players in the world, uh, without, I mean, Federer is not there, but otherwise it's a really tough field, and um, he had he struggled a bit. He uses the head IG Radical MP from a while back. It's an 1820 string pattern, as I said, which for a clay quarter might seem counterintuitive, but big swings, they need a lot of control. And uh, he also has an extended length racket. He's not the tallest guy on the tour. So he has a pretty heavy spec extended length racket to get extra depth, extra plow through on his shots. And he also has extra reach on his serve. As, as a shorter guy myself, I know it's very tricky to get kind of match the taller guys, especially on the serve. So 
that's what he does. But he uses his height in a different way. He, he's really fast, so he moves around the court really well, and that's what a shorter player can benefit from opposite to a taller player. Although they are really tall and very efficient movers with Zverev and Medvedev that kind of move really well around the baseline, uh, but still hit massive serves thanks to their height. So that's the kind of new player that's, that's really um, different from what's been before in the tour. When you had that kind of height, you used to be only good at serves and maybe one attacking shot, but now you can actually, you see them move really well as well. So that's more, more of a, you know, versatile player type. Uh, so I think I covered uh, them all except Tsitsipas. Uh, Tsitsipas uses an, uh, a blade, the Pro Stock 98 from a while back. I think it's the K-Blade, uh, not 100% sure, but it needs kind of a powerful weapon like Federer pretty much that he can attack the ball because he likes to move to the net and he needs stability to be able to put uh, the ball precisely in a, this, in a corner you know, and, and be able to play short points. Uh, still has a pretty solid baseline game like Fed and um, very nice to watch him play because it's a bit of a different style and it, it's, it's a nice matchup to see him play more defensive players, although he seems to have an issue playing Rafa, it's that very tough matchup for him with all that topspin and Rafa likes to play one-handed backhand players, perhaps besides team that can actually deal with that spin uh, that pops up and actually hit the pretty heavy ball back on that wing. Uh, but he uses a more kind of firm but still precision focused frame. So if we go through the player types, so for defensive base planners, you, you want to have a bit more control. You want to be able to kind of thread the needle and be able to hit a, a good passing shot and control the court, maybe look for the weakness, be precise. Um, brackets that kind of fit that playing style, I would say is the kind of the new blade version seven, pretty low powered, a very precise racket. The new radical, their head will release is also a very precise racket. Uh, if you play that kind of game style, you should look for a more control-oriented racket, perhaps 18-20, 18-19 string pattern, or a tight 16-19 like the Radicals. Something with a bit lower flex rating, which is the, the case here, and to get more control and be able to play long rallies and position the ball around the court. Um, obviously, there are you know exceptions to all these rules, but that would be a good thing to, to think about, to use these kind of pro player information and to kind of incorporate that in your own game. If you're an aggressive player, but an aggressive baseliner like Rafa and team, you might want to go for a little bit thicker beam, a little bit more open pattern uh, to get a bit more spin bite and be able to hit big from the back of the court and get a bit of extra help. Because if you want to hit winners from the back and you're playing really solid defensive players, you need some, some extra help from the racket usually. You know, the pure strike, the pure arrow, they're really good spin rackets. Other spin rackets, the Headache Streamline uh, was a good update this year. Dunlop SX is another good spin line. Uh, so if you're a, a top spin focused player, check these frames out. You play with a lot of top spin, but you want a bit more control, you have the pure arrow VS, you have the pure strike line. So these are the frames you should look out for if you have an aggressive top spin focused game. Also, if you have that game, but you have maybe a little bit of arm concern, because a lot of these big, thicker beam and stiffer frames can be a bit of an issue for your arm, uh, check out the Clash Line. I think that's a great frame for spin players. Uh, the Clash Line is not something I'd recommend for players to hit more flat, because it's a little bit hard to detect the ball in that with all that muted feel, and those rackets are really spin focused. The ball really can sail a bit if you don't put enough spin on there. So I would definitely say the clash line is for spin players more than anything else. Uh, so spin and precision kind of dealt with. If you're an aggressive baseliner that you, you hit a bit more flat, definitely the gravity line like with Zverev and Rublev could be interesting. There's also the Prince Phantom line that's also comfortable but, but pretty nice, especially the 100p, I, I like that a lot. And um, you could also try, for example, like I said, the Speed Pro, which has a tighter string pattern, uh, but is still uh, pretty powerful and, and can be, you can dominate from the baseline. So an 1820, a bit more powerful frame, uh, such as that one. So there are a lot of frames in these categories that you can find, but it's good if you have an idea of where you are as a player. Uh, I think that helps a lot. And if you're an aggressive player who likes to get to the net, like Sitsipas, uh, or Federer, for example, you know, check out the Pro Staff 97, the new version, version 13. It's a very good frame. Um, definitely precision, but still some power. Pure strike line is also good if you're an attacking player, because uh, you, you get some extra free pop from that one. 
Angel TC97 is another frame I recommend if you're into kind of attacking tennis, you need a bit more precision, you need to know where the ball is going, uh, but you wanna attack it so you get some free pop. So you're looking a bit for a stiffer frame, but still controlled, that would be my, my take on the more aggressive style of, of frame, like Sitsipa. And if you're a shorter guy like Schwartzman, perhaps it's worth checking out an extended frame. They're not for everyone. I know many players love extended frames, but also know there are a lot of people who can't even swing one. So because they, they feel so different, it takes a long time to get used to it. But for some players, it's definitely worth testing them and see if it's, it's a possible switch. Uh, you do get a bit of extra help on your serve and the swing weight will be higher even with a lower static weight. So you get a little bit more plow through and power on your shots. And uh, I, I would especially recommend if you're a double-handed player because you get a bit of extra real estate on the handle as well. Because a lot of these frames today are, are have a shorter handle and um, maybe it seems like more for one-handed backhand players. Uh, I've heard some complaints, especially about the Wilson, the latest Wilson frames. But with an Excel frame, uh, you can get uh, more real estate on the handle. Uh, also, you can choose the different length there. I mean, Diego uses 28 inches with, and like Serena, so it's a very, very long racket, quite difficult to maneuver. So, but you can get a 27.25 inch, uh, like the new Wilson, uh, like the Wilson Ultra 95, or you can get a 27.5 inch, like a ESO 98 Plus, that's called an ESO 98 Plus or a Babolat Pure Aero Plus. Uh, so there are different frames you can check out that have you know a, a slightly longer length, but they're not that common. And uh, there are also websites that specialize in this, like longbodies.com, that you can check out as well, uh, because they have only focus on extended length rackets. And if you go to a kind of custom racket company, whether it's Dacor or Angel, you can also get extended length frames. So it's worth giving it a go if you're a shorter guy or you just want extra reach on your serve, a bit more swing weight on your rackets. You can definitely be inspired by the top pros, but don't copy their specs, don't obsess too much of their specs. It's interesting to know, and if you want to find out more, you can check out the Tennis Nerd, or you can go to Tennis Warehouse forums, where there are a lot of people that hang out. But don't obsess too much over specs, because I think it might be, uh, you might end up down a rabbit hole, uh, and, and it's uh, the rabbit hole of, of finding the perfect racket is, is, very, is never ending and quite difficult to get out of. So I would recommend going down there. I've been down there for many years and it's, it's not the nicest place at times, although it's, it can be a lot of fun. Uh, I even get emails from people who, who use the consultation service on Tennis Nerd that say they can't even sleep at night because they don't know what racket to use and it you know, keeps bothering them so much. And that's not great. I do know the feeling, uh, it can be really frustrating to not have a racket that's your go-to frame. For some players it's fine, they can bring a racket bag of five rackets and just play around and it's all for fun and giggles and, and they're not too bothered by it. But some people, they just want this set spec, set string, set racket that they can take out into a tournament and all they always feel comfortable with. And, and the journey there can be long and cumbersome and quite frustrating. Um, so I hope I can help in some way with the content I produce and the consultation service if you need that. That's all for this video. It was a bit longer than I had intended. Uh, it's raining here in Malta, so it's a bit um, boring weather. Can't really play tennis, so I better go and, and make some videos, I thought. I'll actually go to the gym now and, and try to you know work on some strength and conditioning instead. I'm gonna also be looking into the comments. I know I've been kind of not uh, been answering comments. I've been so busy, so it's not been like, easy to, uh, to deal with all the different tennis nerd channels. It takes a bit of time to go through all these comments, but I will start doing that next week so you get some more action in the comments field as well. And if you have any ideas of content you want to see, uh, please comment below. I am still waiting on the kind of Blade Pro, which I know a lot of you have been asking about, the Serena autograph racket. They're stuck in customs here in Malta, so I hope I get them soon and I can start playtesting if the weather clears. That's all for this one. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a nice day and don't forget to play some tennis.